man. How you doing, man? We be going to Banana Freely's Banana Island, man. <laughs> I just felt like I had to say that. I felt like I had to say that. So, uh, so what the hell is this today? It is uh, Sunday. I do know it is Sunday. I do believe it is still March, because I'm still talking to the accountant. So it's sometime in March. It is sun Sunday sometime in March. Um, I have to say, I got back from the whole INE thing. Um, I was off at INE, this company called INE in uh, Durham, North Carolina, for a week, doing lots and lots of interviews with, with uh, very, very smart people down there. And I have to say, that went really well. I was, I was worried how it was going to go, because that was completely and utterly just winging it like to say that my little trip down there was anything other than winging it is just yeah winging it is being nice basically i went down there uh and all i knew is i was getting paid uh every day i was there and then i had to output work every day and then figuring out what that work would be yeah, you know, they'll figure it out as you go. So, uh, so I was down there. They had me interviewing CCIEs and all these fancy people over at Cisco. Um, and overall, it was a good thing. Like I said, it was a good experience. INE was a good company. Um, and we'll have some conversations about, about some of the lessons learned with that. But one of the reasons, one of the, one of the things that I learned uh, doing that whole little trip was that, oh, my golly, oh, my golly, Americans eat a lot of salt. <laughs> Shit, right. So as I tell you guys, so anybody who who clicked on the clickbait to come here and hear me talk about banana freely, you probably should leave right about now, cause yeah, right. But uh, as any of you guys know, my wife is uh, was uh, Whole Foods oil free, basically sugar free vegan. Again, with with two cancers and some other issues. Uh, she is very, very, very pure with, with how she eats. Um, and so basically, you know, me being a relatively decent husband, um, I don't feel like there's a lot of reason to, uh, to argue with that when, when, when I'm at home, right? So I am not vegan by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm vaguely plant-based. I'm plant-ish. You don't say vegan-ish. Like, if for any of you guys out there that don't know the difference, there is a difference. There is plant-based, as far as food goes, and vegan. <laughs> Plant-based and vegan. <laughs> All right. Oh, vegan. Vegan is a whole lifestyle. Vegan is a whole dogma. Basically, plant-based means that you eat plants for your sustenance. Vegan is a whole just bunch of moral and ethical things that go into it. And as you guys know who follow me, I just don't abide by all those moral and ethical things most of the time. So basically, you know, being at home, um, you, you know, we, we, I don't eat dairy. Dairy is... Veganism aside, dairy is blah, just not good for you. Um, and then as far as meat and all that is concerned, um, I generally don't just don't have it in the house. Uh, it's one of the things like like meat is a lot like smoking. Just so just so you guys know, if you have a family member that goes uh, goes vegan or whatever, is it's like this weird thing. Like when everybody does it, you don't really notice the smell and you don't really notice uh, you know the the stuff it gives off that I enjoy, and I think it smells very good. But since my, my wife is vegan, one of the things that I've noticed uh, is just like when you cook a steak in the house, the entire house kind of sort of smells like steak. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so, you know, trying to have a good relationship there, trying <laughs> to have a good marriage. Uh, since she's vegan, since she's, uh, she's, uh, she has the reasons for it, I figure, you know what, in the house, I basically leave it out of the house. Maybe every, every two weeks or so, I might bring a steak into the house and, uh, and eat it here. But, but over, otherwise, you know, if I eat meat or animal products, I eat them outside the house. It's just kind of a consideration on, for her, right? So being home, you know, eat, eat pretty, pretty whole foods, pretty whole foods, pretty, pretty basic stuff. And so that was a funny thing. So going to, uh, going down to INE and going down to, to Durham, North Carolina, you know, spending a week, um, I was going to go and I was going to, you know, just eat my normal food. Right. Cause I'm like, yeah, screw it. I'm going down there. I don't care. I'm just going to go eat normal food. So I go and I have some pizza some nights and I have this food some nights and this food some nights. And the one thing, right, so going down there, I thought, like, oil would bother me. So I've talked about that. I have some digestion problems. So uh, so garlic and onions screw me up anymore. Uh, sugar, like pure sugar isn't good for me. So I go down there and, uh, and I figure, you know, especially with how 
oil, again, not oil free we eat, but very light on oil. I figured, huh, I wonder, you know, not being used to eating very much oil anymore, uh, will it bother me to go out? And so going out and eating, like I say, eating the pizza and all that kind of stuff, I do have to say that like the oil and all that didn't bother me one iota. Didn't bother me one iota. So I stayed away from the garlic and onions, um, stayed away from the sugar, ah, no beer anymore, right? Um, and overall, overall, it was a good thing. So, um, so basically then, uh, you know, I'm eating the food, and then what I noticed, like, from the first night on, is, like, after I get done, like, with dinner at night, I feel like this dried-up fish, right? You know, you look at those, those fish, like, on the ground, and they're all, like, dried up or whatever, and I realized, like, from the salt intake, from the, the foods that I was eating, it was like... Really, like, like, honestly, like, in all seriousness, like, snark and all that kind of stuff aside, it was, like, the first night, um... I went to bed and I found it really, really, really hard to even sleep just because there was so much salt. And so that was one of those interesting things. Again, one of those random things to talk to you guys about, like, you know, health and food and all that kind of stuff, is there's this, these, these things that you don't even think about. And uh, for me, one of them was salt. Because like I say, I'm very happy to be home now, very happy to be eating my food again, because it is not salty. And it's weird, because I like my salt. Like, I'm one of those people that, like, dumps salt on food. So I figured I was eating a lot of salt. <laughs> Apparently not as much as most Americans, because I swear to you, I swear to you, the amount of salt that um, that uh, that uh, it felt like I ate while I was on that trip was just like like horrible. And I had I had different foods at different places and all that, and uh, you know, so it wasn't like okay, well, in the hotel restaurant, I just oversalted everything. I had food different places, and like the entire time I was there the week, I was just like, oh my golly, the salt is so horrible. So basically, with that, I started thinking, uh, started. Th contemplating this idea of a cleanse, a cleanse. So uh, you may have may not have heard of cleanses. And so basically the cleanses, the idea of cleanses, is that basically you eat either one or a couple of specific types of food for a week all the way up to a month uh, in order to clean out your system. So there's this idea that your system is all full of this stuff that gets like left over from all the stuff you eat in life, and so basically you have a cleanse to, to cleanse it all out. So coming back from, from this trip, and I felt all salty, I was like, huh, I'm kind of curious about doing a cleanse. Do I believe in cleanses? No. <laughs> Am I, do I believe that the cleanse will change my life? No. But I'm just coming back, and it's like, huh, that really seemed like it screwed up my system a little bit. And so I am just kind of vaguely curious to see what a cleanse is like. Now, I know some of you guys might be laughing at me, like, oh, huh, huh, Eli doing a cleanse. How stupid is Eli? Eli is doing a cleanse. But, you know, for me, it's like, well, why the hell not? Again, as I tell you guys on my other channels, um, you know, geek. Geek life, motherfucker. Geek life, motherfucker. It's, it's not just about servers, and it's not just about switches, and it's not just about wireless access points and TCP IP and all that kind of crap. Geek life is about pushing the limits, like in everything that you do, right? Uh, because again, as I, as I talk to you guys about the, the places where you will find success in life, um, are not the places where you think you will find success in life. Um, again, I just did 11 interviews with people with all kinds of wacky ass stories uh, that are successful. And the, the, the reality is everybody has this idea of, you know, okay, in order to be successful, Eli, I get my A+, plus, I get my Net+, plus, I get my MCSA, MCSE, I get my CCIE, and then I become successful. It's like, eh, no, that's not really how it works. Uh, how it works is you go out there and you experiment and you play with the world, um, and then you find problems... Uh, that people want to solve and that they're willing to pay for, and then you find a technological solution to solve those problems, and then shing shing, you make money. But here's the thing: the question becomes, how do you how do you find those problems? How do you find those issues? How do you find the things that need to be solved? <sighs> Unless you're PewDiePie, it's not by sitting there in front of your little PlayStation 4 and playing video games all day. Well, what you really have to do is you have to go out and you have to go play and you have to, you have to go experiment and you have to go and, and see and see what works and see what doesn't work. Uh, and you don't learn about what works and you don't learn about what doesn't work um, simply by reading other people or watching other people, one of the things is you just dive in and you play and you see how it works for you. So with me, when I say, in this point in time, I've always kind of been curious about these whole uh, cleanse things. Um, I'm coming off of this trip where I feel like I got salted like a fucking sardine. And so it's like, huh, 
I think I will try a cleanse. Again, not because I think it will change my life. Truly. Truly. Not at all. Not because I think it will change my life. Not because I have so many horrible chronic problems. I just need something that will solve them. Just kind of sort of like, huh, you know, I've heard about these cleanses for like 20 years. Long before cleansing was cool, I heard about them. You know, the whole fasting and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, huh, I don't know. Well, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I don't have anything. I don't have anything interesting on my plate this week or next week. So I might as well see what this whole cleansing thing is like. Maybe it'll be amazing. Maybe it'll be wonderful. Maybe it'll be great. Uh, maybe it'll be god awful. I have no idea. So basically, thinking about these cleanses, so, you know, I've been thinking about the cleanses for a while, just because, you know, shits and giggles, why the hell not? Um, but then the other thing is, so then the question then becomes, you know, what kind of cleanse are you going to do? And this is why Banana Freely's little thing kind of comes in. It comes in from a practical standpoint. Uh, so, you know, what kind of cleanse are you doing? Are you going to do a fast fast? You know, water fast? Fuck that. <laughs> I'm sure it works. <laughs> uh, God bless you if you do it. No, okay. They're not going to do a water fast. And then you look at all these other weird little fasts out there, and it's like, huh, okay, that's an interesting fast. There's all kinds of, like, a juicing cleanse, and a this cleanse, and a that cleanse, and that cleanse. But again, right, um, I'm a geek. geek. Geek to the bone. So the question then has to become, if I'm going to be doing something, um, I am looking for something that has value beyond the actual event. Right? So if I'm going to do a cleanse, um, it's not simply about the, the benefit of the cleanse itself. Maybe it'll do great, maybe it'll do poorly. But, you know, but the question is, is, is what, what are going to be the takeaways from it? What, what can I do with this past? Um, so if I look at things like the juicing cleanses and all that kind of stuff, um, juicing is a pain in the ass. Again, we, we have a juicer here, we have a Vitamix, my wife has juiced a lot, and juicing is a, in a really expensive pain in the ass. Uh, so if I do a juicing cleanse, uh, and even if it works, Am I really going to want to do that in the future? Is, what's, what's the follow-on? What's the carry? It's like, eh, no, that doesn't really seem very good for me. Uh, the whole fasting thing, again, if you want to fast, great. But, eh, I don't really see a carry-on with a fast. But the curious thing is it then comes up with this whole idea of the banana, the banana cleanse, right? So uh, the banana cleanse. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about is I go out and, like I say, I travel a lot. And they, wherever I travel, um, you just never know what kind of food is going to be there. Right? You just don't. Um, and one of the issues that I've run into is, again, I'm not vegan and I'm not all of these things. Uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of times when I just want food at the end of the day. Right? Uh, like, I don't really want a burger. I don't really want, you know, this, that, or the other thing. Um, it is late. I want food. I need food. And therefore, I go to the... Uh, Oh, I go to the local restaurant, and what do I eat? A burger. Not necessarily because I want it or anything else, just because I need food to put in my system. Uh, same is true for, like, breakfast and, and all that kind of stuff. You wake up in the morning, and you're, like, you know, traveling, and what are you, what are you going to eat? And a lot of places don't have oatmeal. It's, it's omelets and all that kind of stuff. And, again, I don't have an issue with omelets. I don't have an issue with omelets. I don't have an issue with steak and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's not necessarily something that I want uh, every day. I want in the morning because again, again, there's a difference between between horrible, awful, never do morally wrong, and something that you should probably watch doing right. Um, and so the interesting thing that I find with the idea of the, the the banana cleanse, the banana cleanse, is since I'm at home right now, since I can take a week or two weeks or however long it'll be, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute uh, to do it. Um, I can see how well bananas work for me. Right. Uh, so, again, if, if I go off and I go travel and I do things, um, really, you only need one good meal per day. I mean, like one meal per day, right, with uh, the whole balanced stuff. Realistically, and if you, if you look at it like with what you normally eat, you generally have like two meals that are, that are pretty... Yeah, yeah, okay, regardless, right? You know, so I mean, in the morning, I eat, I eat my, my oatmeal with some fruit, but that's not a fully balanced meal. You know, I eat a lot of, oh, grains and stuff during the day. Um, and so what I'm thinking about with the whole banana thing is since I travel a lot and all that kind of stuff is if I go on a banana cleanse and it works out and I feel good, that could be a very simple way to feed myself while I'm traveling. I throw two boxes of bananas in the back of the truck and then that's that's a whole bunch of meals that I don't have to worry about um like one 
one, even on a 30 banana a day diet. So like one box of bananas is like 90 bananas. Um, so theoretically that's, you know, two, two boxes of bananas is, is a week's worth of food. Um, and especially when you're traveling, two boxes of bananas is $50 or less, at least here in the U S. Um, so that's not a bad thing. That's rather inexpensive. That's rather easy. And that's one thing too, for me, like with traveling is one of the questions becomes like when you want to eat well with traveling is how are you going to prepare the food? So if you have to cook food, again, we talk about scents, like when I cook steak and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it makes the hotel room smell and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and a lot of hotel rooms don't like you doing it. There, there's official policies that you can't cook in the hotel room. Uh, so, you know, cooking and all that kind of stuff uh, can be a real pain in the ass. Uh, again, even doing even doing uh, juicing or whatever. I mean, the issue is, is if you're in a normal hotel room, how the hell are you going to wash all those dishes? Um, again, you use the Vitamix. And the Vitamix is like an amazing tool. Uh, but, oh my God, that thing's a pain in the ass to clean properly. Now I know what you're saying. Well, you just put the water in the show bin and you hit the clean cycle. Yeah. And then after that's done, you go eh, to try to get it out. Right. Uh, so trying to, trying to clean up with a lot of food is just a pain in the butt. So you have to worry about like the odor, you have to worry about the mess. Then you have to worry about, um, you know, the, the stuff that's left over. And again, if you're in a small hotel room and you start cooking, uh, whether or not the hotel people complain at you after a week, you just kind of, yeah, right. So that's the other thing I was thinking about with the whole banana thing is, again, I take I take two boxes of bananas with me. I eat a banana. I throw the banana peel in the garbage can every day. They come and take banana peels. That doesn't sound too bad. So if I so if eating bananas works well, it's inexpensive travel food. Um, it's travel food that you don't have to cook and doesn't create a mess. It's travel food that they take all the stuff away. And it's travel food that can't you get it can't get you into any arguments, right? You know, again, like I say, if you come in with your little pressure cooker, <laughs> people can start giving you the evil eye. You come in with your little bushel of bananas, people like what the fuck's he doing with all his bananas? But they're probably not going to say anything with you. So that's my interest on the whole banana cleanse versus any of these other cleanses. Because again, uh, however it goes, um, particularly now um, and going into the future, should be a good thing. So we're going to go. We are going to try this thing. And so the idea, uh, the basic rules, of course, being a geek, of course, being a geek, I haven't read all the rules because that would just be wrong. How do you learn if you don't fuck up? Screwing up is the way you really learn. Uh, so I've gone by the basic rules. And so the basic rules seem to be 30 bananas a day. So the idea is you eat 30 bananas a day, and that is what sustains you. Honestly, it's not the stupidest of diets. I, I mean, that's a funny thing. Like, like, and like banana freely like gets all this crap from people. Um, and again, I've looked at uh, lots of different types of diets and all that kind of stuff over the years. And I do have to say, <clears throat> 30 bananas a day. It's probably the least stupid of some of these diets. Um, I actually tried Atkins way back when. Oh my Christ. <laughs> what I don't understand, here's what I don't know. Here, here's the thing with the modern world. Again, if you don't like these stupid diets or cleanses or whatever, hey, I'm with you there. I can completely understand that. But when you have people arguing about the difference between them, Again, because you get like the Atkins people like screaming at their fruititarians, the, the people that just eat fruit all the time. And it's just like you sit in the middle of this. <laughs> it's just like you're both fucking idiots. <laughs> you should only eat pure meat. No, you should only eat fruit. And you're just like, hey, guys. <laughs> right? Um, and that is the funny thing to be thinking about. Like, it's like with this whole fruititarian thing. That's what they are. They're fruititarians. Basically, all they eat is fruit. Um, or a lot of people just eat fruit. Uh, but but that's a, that's the thing. Is is as ridiculous as that may sound to you? Like I say, when I when I say I'm going to do a banana cleanse, as stupid as that may sound to you right now, I just want you to think about the first time you heard about Atkins. <laughs> just think about the first time you heard about Atkins and ask yourself: Is eating bananas for a week really worse than Atkins? Is it really any more stupid than Atkins at the end of the day? And I'd say, no, honestly, no. And I did. I tried the, I tried, I tried the Atkins thing for like two weeks, and it just was horrible. And it, like they, they talk about the ketosis or whatever. I didn't even get to the ketosis part. It's just so much grease. It's like, how do you eat this much grease? It was just like, oh, this is horrible. I'm supposed to do this for like two months? Fuck this, right? So anyways, so so the idea, those are some of the ideas with this whole banana thing. Now, I do have to say with the whole Freely, the banana girl and Durian Rider, they actually have their little policy now of, uh, of raw till four. So they're fruititarians, so they eat dates, Daterade, and 
bananas and durians and strawberries and all that kind of stuff. Um, but their, their idea is that you eat raw till four. Um, and one of the reasons is because eating fruit all the time can get re like redonkulously expensive. Um, and so one of the reasons I will give the shout out to banana, the Freely and Durian writer on this is at least they have some concept of practical. Right, because I have heard these fruititarians in the past. Um, they're like fruit, fruit, fruit. All you should ever eat is fruit. Um, and it's like, dude, I'm a computer guy. I'm like a well-paid technology professional, and holy crap, that's expensive. <laughs> it's like, yeah, ah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, okay, even if even if it is theoretically the best diet in the world, if if you can't afford it, what the hell matters? And um, when you start looking at like a lot of these these fruits, I mean, they just get like ridiculously expensive, especially when all of your nutrition is coming from fruit. Um, now I know a lot of people are like, oh, you can, you can't you can't get enough uh, calories or whatever from fruit. And the thing is, you can, you really can. I mean, there's just no that's just stupid. Of course, you can get enough calories from fruit. Except that he's so fucking money of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> hey, dear. <laughs> Here's your, here's your dinner case of food type of deal. Because, uh, like, you can eat, like, water. What is it, like, four watermelons or something as a meal? Oh, my golly. Um, and, again, you know, hey, if, you're, if your stomach can handle that, fine. Uh, but a lot of a lot of a lot of the issues that people have, they just can't afford that kind of stuff. Um, and so the one nice thing with uh, banana freely and their their thing is they do this uh, raw till four. So the idea is you eat raw food until four o'clock, uh, and then after that you eat vegan. Uh, but you know, rice and you know, whole foods type stuff. So that is one thing to be thinking about. This um, again, whenever you get into the, any of these weird diets. Um, cleanses or whatever else the biggest problem that i have with uh, a lot of this whole this whole world is the same problem i have with any religion and it is a lot of these guys go religious again veganism is a religion uh plant-based is a, a, a dietary habit veganism is a religion and one of the problems is is they just get so oh so just dogmatic about things and again like oh the only way the only thing humans were built to consume is fruits it's like, well, yeah. How, how does that work for the Eskimos? <laughs> Dear Eskimos, <laughs> back in the day, the Eskimos, they survived off all the oranges that they could eat. They could find. Anyways, um, but that is that is one thing to be thinking about. So that's why I kind of like the whole banana and the durian rider thing. Okay, well, I say raw till four, and they also do other stuff. Again, durian rider. If you've never seen that stuff, that's some weird stuff. He, like, eats whole things of sugar or whatever. I just don't know. My wife watches that. My wife is, like, addicted to that stuff. And again, good information. I'm not sure how many videos I need. But so, so with that, let's go in here and let's look at the bananas. So we do, in fact, just so you know, you can, in fact, buy literally cases of bananas, right? So, uh, so my wife is going to be doing this, too. Um, and again, as far as politics or whatever in that in the family goes, she has organic... I have non-organic. Because, as I will say as a geek, if I was actually going to care a lot about the, the world and the planet, I would argue vegan non-organic is the way to go. Um, dogmatically, as far as religious people are concerned, uh, you would go for organic. But um, again, I actually know Oh, a lot of the farmers and the agricultural folks and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, and a lot of damage is actually done by organic. It, it is, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, what, what you don't see can cause a lot of damage. Um, so I, I go for the non-organic. Nice part is it's also a little bit less expensive. But if you're interested in doing this, if you're like, hey, I, I want to go on a banana cleanse, just so you know, uh, you can go to grocery stores and like literally buy these by the case. So we have four cases here, so this should be good for a week each, six days to a week each. Um, and basically just went to, uh, for these, just went to Whole Foods. Uh, so at Whole Foods, if you go in um, and you ask them for cases of bananas, uh, they literally just say how many. Uh, which is nice, because my wife needed to buy a case of bananas before, she bought them at like Safeway, and literally the dumbasses, like she bought a 40 pound case of bananas, and then when she went to the cash register, they literally, literally, they literally wanted to pull out every single damn banana and weigh it. And she was like, are you out of your damn mind? <laughs> you want to pull out 40 pounds of bananas, when it literally says on the box, 40 fucking pounds of bananas, right? 
So the one thing that I will give with going for Whole Foods is you walk in with some kind of nutty ass food requirement and they're pretty good with it. So basically I walked in last night, I said, hey, I need cases of bananas. And they said, how many? And again, lesson in life on how to keep customers. When somebody asks you for something strange, you don't sit there and ask why, you say how many? And so I said, can I get two organic and can I get two uh, non-organic? And they said, sir, yes, sir. And they went off with their little thing and they brought out four cases of them. Um, the one thing that is nice too is if you go to a store and they will sell to you by the case is you do get a nice little discount if you buy them uh, by the case. So. Um, uh, organic right now was 79 cents a pound and non-organic was like 59 cents a pound. Basically what that came out to is the organic was about $29 per 40 pound case and the uh, the non-organic was $25 per, uh, per, per case. So you know that's about $50 for a cleanse and her thing's about $60 for a cleanse. And so they have the, have the, they have the, uh, the case discount when you buy it. Um, so that, that's a nice little benefit again if you go to one of those stores that will give you a nice case discount because it was it was like I don't know it was like three dollars per case which I'm sure for however many pounds probably you know, five or ten cents off per pound eh, that's not a bad thing now one of the issues that you run into if you're going to be doing these these cleanses is I don't know what the hell has happened with the banana industry in like the past 20 years do you remember I, I, I remember when I was a kid when I was a little child and you would go to the store and you would buy bananas and they'd be ripe I remember when I was a kid and you went to the store, like the problem was is that when you bought bananas, you had to make sure that they weren't too ripe, right? So if you bought them and they were too ripe, uh, then they would go bad before you could eat them. Bad. Or basically they would turn into something you could use for banana bread. Now the problem is, is when you buy these damn bananas, is they are just... Uh, green as hell. So these are the ones I got yesterday. And there is like, there's no... It takes a while. It takes a while for these things to actually ripen up. So if you are going to be doing this whole little banana cleanse thing, it is something to realize that you can't just go out and buy bananas um, and have them be how you want them to be. Um, my wife says it may take like up to a week before these are actually uh, good enough for you to eat. Because the thing is, like if you eat, like with me, being a geek, this is the one warning I've heard, um, the one real warning I've heard, is like me being a geek, um, I would eat this. <laughs> I would eat this and not even think twice about it, right? Uh, it's a banana. It's yellow. It's yellow. <laughs> and this is the one thing my wife would look at me was like, no, motherfucker, no, you will not eat this. Because when you're eating like 30 of these a day, like if you eat one of these a day and it's like this, yeah, it's not too bad. You know, whatever, it's, it's not a great banana, but it's not too bad. Uh, when you eat 30 that look like this, um, you are just going to be a very, very, very unhappy boy. Um, not because they're theoretically unedible. But it's like anything else, they're just not right. So basically what we have to do is we have to wait for them to go from looking like this to go into here and do my wife's banana closet to starting to look like this. Like something like that, this, this is probably a fine example of what a banana should be. Uh, but as you can see, as you can see, bananas are much like fine wine that, uh, that you individually cut them off, you, you put them in the... Oh, sorry about that. That was a little weird. Out of all the taping I have done on this video camera, that is the first time I had an issue. All of a sudden it said like the SD card had gotten damaged. Ah! All right. Anyways, so we did the recovery on the data, so hopefully that should be good. And uh, we'll continue on with this video. Uh, but anyways, anyways, um, so yes, we have our nice little, a nice little banana closet here where we ripen up the bananas. And as you can see in my house, there are literally bananas, bananas, bananas everywhere. Um, and so that's gonna be the big thing, is, uh, is making sure that they, they can ripen up um, and so that we can eat them, so about a week. So uh, I am gonna do some researching on how to make them ripen faster. My wife has been playing around with it. Um, and you do have to be careful without your like ripen bananas. She has found like the weird ways you don't ripen bananas. Like don't put bananas in the sun while it's cold. Apparently that kind of fucks bananas all to hell and back. Like, sun and warmth uh, makes bananas ripen a lot quicker. Uh, but sun and cold, uh, apparently not so good for bananas. Not so good for bananas. So I'll do some research. Uh, but one thing, if you are going to do this, uh, apparently, again, you want to be able to select all your bananas. And the bananas, um, 
The big thing with bananas is they ripen at different times. So we're going to have to go through and all of these bananas, basically, you, you cut them off into individual bananas so you can pick the exact proper one that you're going to be eating. Um, as far as bananas go, uh, they've got about, they've got somewhere around the order of about 100 calories per, uh, oh, uh, per banana. So their, their idea is you eat 30 bananas a day, it comes out to about 3,000 calories. Uh, as Dorian Ryder says, carb the fuck up, man! Um, uh, as far as eating 30 bananas a day, we will see if I actually do that. Uh, one thing, I've been talking to my wife about this whole, like I say, with Freely and Durian Ryder, and uh, some of the things that they say. And one of the interesting things to learn, and this is, this is just what you learn in life when you actually start talking to people, is one of the big problems, especially with women, is that uh, like, like women don't eat enough. Like in our society... Um, they're just told like to eat very, 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 very little, right? And so they don't eat enough calories. And so one of the reasons why Durian Ryder and Freely are so big into eating like a lot of a lot of the fruits um, is to kind of break people out of the mindset of not eating enough, because uh, that's the biggest problem. Like if you go on a fruitarian diet or you go on a vegan or anything else, um, the main problem, the main reason why people leave um, isn't isn't because of bacon actually, no bacon, uh, but it's act it's because they don't. Don't get enough calories, right? You know, um, again, you know, if you figure you need to eat, you know, 30 bananas a day to feel healthy, uh, and then you're only eating 10, which is what some of these people do, right? You go on a banana, instead of a banana cleanse, you go on a banana diet, so you're eating like three bananas per meal. Uh, well, then it's no no shock, no surprise when, um, when everything kind of goes to hell. Uh, it has nothing to do with the bananas. Not one iota of a thing to do with bananas. It has to do with you're not getting nearly enough calories in life. But anyway, so these should be about um, these should be about 100, eh, give or take, or around 100 calories a piece. So again, 30, 30, 30 bananas a day. Why I'm not so worried about it again. I'm a boy, I'm a mar mar mark man, mark man. Um, and eating quantities of food is not exactly something I'm overly worried about. Um, so I will probably go into this the first day or two. I'll probably eat the full 30 or so bananas. Um, but then after that, just, just see how it feels. I say if I feel cranky. Um, it is funny. Like, you talk with women. And it's like, some of these were like, like, they don't put two and two together. It's like, I didn't realize I was so cranky because I wasn't eating enough food. <laughs> You're like, son of a like I say with guys, like I say with males, at least in our society, it's, hey, dude, you're acting cranky. Eat something. Um, but apparently that is not the case with women. Apparently that's not what they're told. Um, so anyways, that's as far as my, my food consumption will be. Like I say, I'll probably start at that 30. And then we'll go from there, and then I'll, then I'll see how I feel. If I need more bananas, I will eat more bananas. And if I get bloated with 30 bananas, then I get bloated with 30 bananas. But this should be an interesting thing. And again, like I say, I know a lot of you guys are going to laugh at me. Oh, Eli, ha, ha, ha. But... Again, there is a practical issue that I'm thinking about here. Uh, there's a curious thing. Like, I just have heard a lot about cleanses and stuff over the past 20 years. I've uh, always kind of thought about doing one and just, eh, whatever reason, never got around to it. Um, uh, so that, that's a curious thing. Uh, but then the practical thing, too, is like I say, I mean, I do a lot of travel. If you guys follow me, I do a lot of traveling. Um, and again, I, li I like my good barbecue. Oh, my God, some world-class steak. Oh, right? Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I, d I don't want to waste a burger. This is, this is where I get into all, like, the snarkiness with, like, a lot of the vegans sometimes, and they get so, like, oh, self-righteous or whatever, is it's like, like I say, for me, do I want to eliminate animal products out of my life? No. no just don't. Uh, on the other hand, uh, could I massively reduce the amount of animal products in my life um, and not really, not really think about it? Like not actually even be much of an issue, and yes, and so that's why I'm kind of thinking about that. Like I say, with this whole banana thing, is is beyond the cleanse and beyond veganism and beyond religion and beyond this and beyond that and beyond all the other stuff. It's like okay, I travel a lot. I need food when I travel. Food when you're on the road is expensive as snot, right? Uh, you know, you go to a, uh, you know, the, the hotel, they're stupid, they're horrible, they're disgusting buffet in the morning with still 12 bucks plus, uh, uh, 12 bucks plus, um, plus tips, so like $15 for a rather disgusting buffet. Uh, so I'm again, you spend like $45 a day on food. So it's like, well, I don't really want to spend that much money on food, especially on food that I don't really want anyway. And if I'm going to eat food that I don't really want, then why not eat something that seems at least vaguely healthy um, and is probably pretty good for me. 
So that's my thought. That's my long rambling thought. And we will see. We will see. So uh, we'll keep doing these little vlogs and we'll go into island day one, island day two, island day three. Now theoretically, I think Banana Freely went on one of these for like 30 days. Yeah, I'm not doing that <laughs> again. I am curious. That's about it. <clears throat> so the plan with this is more or less uh, a week. So seven days. <clears throat> again, I'm not going autistic on it. So I'm like, ah, oh, master seven days. Because uh, I looked at it again. We counted out how many bananas were in a case before. And they came out to about 90. So basically my thought is... I'm going to do the cleanse for 180 bananas, however long it takes me to get through 180 bananas. So if it takes me uh, you know, a week to get through 180 bananas, great. If it takes me five days to get through 180 bananas, great. If it takes me a month to get through 180 bananas, eh, I probably need to go to the doctor. There's something wrong with me, right? So that is a thought. That is a thought. So when they are ripe, I will start, I'll start talking. And it will be interesting, too, because I'm doing like the exercise and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's not just, it's not just me sitting in like the house. Cause again, you know, whenever, whenever these people talk about these diets or whatever is, it is amazing just how little so many people like, like move. Right. So if you're not, you're working at your house or if you're working, if you're not doing much, you know, it seems easy to go on a cleanse or whatever. Um, when, when you really have no activity, I mean, there are a lot of Americans on this planet that don't even get a mile of walking, uh, in a day. Uh, so they go on a cleanse I don't really give a crap what the hell they say. Uh, cause I mean, they're just not getting enough physical activity for it to matter. So the nice part with me, especially like in my routine now, um, is I get an hour of exercise every day. Um, and then the nice part too, is since I work from home and do these videos um, that uh, you know if I don't feel good I can I can I can like eh, I, you know I can't I can I can deal with it you know it's it's like one of those things like I can actually feel the experience as it is like if I'm feeling really great great and if I'm feeling really crappy then I then I can accept that and go anyways so that is my thought that's my thought I'll see what all you guys be like oh Eli has gone bananas yeah I don't know Seems interesting. But again, again, what I find funny, what I find hilarious, before I move on to, uh, to a couple other things, what I find hilarious is how much people will trash things like fruititarian diets or banana cleanses, will utterly trash that kind of diet, and then they will go to McDonald's. <laughs> and it's just like, you know what? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you trash the fruititarian diet and then you go home and you have a healthy, well-balanced, home-cooked meal, I can understand that. I can grasp that, right? You know, if you trash uh, this diet and you're, you're all doing, it, yeah, whatever. But like, again, like so many people will trash this and I'm following like one guy, like uh, Barnacles. He's another YouTuber. And like, uh, I like Barnacles. I'm a little worried for it. He's taking like the Soylent. Soylent. Again. And so, so many people will be like, yes, Eli, Soylent is the future. Soylent, look, you pay $3 and it comes in a bottle. Obviously, that's good for you. But you say, yeah, I'm just going to eat bananas. And I, oh, <laughs> you, oh you just, you're just going all like cultish on us, aren't you? <laughs> you're just like, oh, how is Soylent? Soylent is the future and bananas are considered a joke. That's 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 eyes, Eli. That's that's that, that's how Eli sees it. But anyways, anyways, that is it. So as soon as those things ripen up, um, we'll start eating bananas, 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 and we will see. We will see again. Like I say, I don't know. It may go horribly. It may go horribly. I may be here like three days into it, going ah, uh, or it may go great. But again, guys, you're geeks, and that's the whole thing. Like ge the, the whole point of being this, this is what this is what just pisses me off about the modern world. Is, is So I'm in this world where we get outsized returns, we get outsized wealth based on seeing the world in different ways um, and being able to solve problems other people haven't seen, right? So again, for us, you know, accountants and... I don't know, accountants and lawyers and all that, they got to go out there and they have, they have all these, you know, they have all this paint by number crap on, on how things needs, how things need to be done. And that's how they become successful. But that's not how geeks become successful. How we become successful is we go out there, we explore, we experiment, we put our asses on the line. And a lot of times, a lot of times it don't work out well. <laughs> a lot of times it do not work out well. 
But that one time out of 20, that one time out of 30, you might do something amazing. Again, um, I, I was watching the one venture, ca one of these venture capitalists, and he said, out of every 64 investments he makes, he only expects two to be successful. And that's our world. That's our world, right? Um, and so that's why I lose my mind with all these people that, again, when I go out there, I experiment, I play, I fuck around, and then they're all, they just laugh at me like, oh, how ridiculous is this? Eli, Eli, you need to get your brain back in gear and go back to doing what you need to be doing. And it's like, don't, don't you realize the value of going on a banana cleanse? Um, cause it is true. Like, like I was talking, uh, like I've been talking to you guys about the geek diet for a while now. Um, uh, and that's the thing, like, like there was somebody, like they, they left me a message and it was like, can you, can you just tell me, can you just tell me in your videos and your vlogs when the real information starts? Cause I want to skip over all this geek diet stuff. And it's like, look, dumbass, <laughs> dumbass, let me be very blunt for you, <laughs> blunt to you. That geek diet stuff is probably what is the most important stuff in the videos. The geek diet stuff, this banana cleanse thing, this actually, I swear to the spaghetti monster, that is what is most valuable. This, experimenting, playing, seeing what works, continuing to move forward every single day just by a tiny little bit to see, hey, can I get just a little bit more improvement out of it? That is what's valuable. Again, me talking about DNS and any cast and any of that crap. I mean, fine. It's, I mean, it's good and all. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be too down on it. But that's not, that's not where the real value is. But anyways, that's just me. <laughs> that is just what I would say. But I would say you should listen because you've been listening this long. So if you're listening this long and then you ignore what I say, well, that just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, yeah. So I and E went well. I've been trucking along in the geek diet while I was gone. Um, so I was a little worried, right? So I was a little worried. So when I left, when I left on a Sunday, oh, was it Sunday or Saturday? Anyways, I was at down to 199.5. I was really happy. I was down to that 199.5. And so going off to I and E and all that, I was worried about where I would come back at because I knew, I knew I'd be eating crappy food. And I knew I didn't think I'd be getting that much exercise and all that kind of stuff. Because again, when you go off on business travel. Um, when I'm here at home, again, I can fuck around with, uh, with cleanses and exercising a lot because it doesn't really matter if I tire myself out. I just take a nap. <laughs> as long as I put out like a couple of videos a week, right? It doesn't matter like whether the video comes out on Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, it's not, not the loss of my job. Uh, the problem is, is when you go out to these business trips, uh, it is the loss of the job. I mean, again, like I say, these, the, like I and E hired me to come out to do interviews. And that means I show up at this time and then I interview people all day long. Holy crap. Friday. My God, those bastards were masochists on Friday. Four interviews. <laughs> Four, like long, 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 long interviews I had to do like on Friday. And that was the thing. I had to just be in there and you go, right? And especially as being somebody on camera, right? So a lot of you guys, um, again, you can be a crabby, you're bitchy, you're not feel well. And it doesn't matter. You're just sitting in your, your cube or your server room or whatever else. Uh, the problem with my job, especially when you get hired to do my job, is I got to be on. Hello again. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. I have been invited down here by INE to D their Durham, North Carolina office to interview this fine specimen of an IT professional. Hello, thank you for being here. Explain to me what your job is again. Oh, that's very amazing. That's very great. So, so how did you get there? What was the impetus for what you were going to do? Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. Now, why did you go that way instead of the other? Oh, that's good. But if you went this way, and then now you're at where you are, how did you get from where that? To ba 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 ba. All right, fucking do that shit four times in a day. Um, and so, uh, so I figured my diet would kind of go to hell because again, um, I didn't figure I would exercise a lot while I was there. And then again, um, again, the food. Food that is good for you for the long term <laughs> isn't necessarily what works well for the short term. <laughs> um, so I figured I'd be eating pretty crappy food. Um, but I went there, and basically it was a little more relaxed than I thought. Longer days than I thought, uh, but a little more relaxed. Um, 
And so uh, while I was there, I watched the food consumption a little bit, a little bit. Uh, but the thing that I that I that I got addicted to is I got a little bored um, because you know being there, you know I may work a long day, but it was kind of off out in one of these weird ass office parks. It was like too far to go into Durham or to go anyplace cool, and I don't drink alcohol anymore. Um, and so I was kind of sitting there, just kind of watching all five versions of HBO. Um, and so I got bored, and so I figured, well. You know, I'm not really feeling that physically tired, uh, so I'll go down to their little gym and see what they have. Uh, and so I found they had an elliptical machine. Woohoo! I like ellipticals. I don't know what it is. It feels so stupid now. Uh, but no, so I went down there and I was, I, was, I was looking at their exercise stuff. They didn't have very many weights. I was looking for some weights. All right, I was like manly weights. Uh, and they really had a crap. They had like, they had a few dumbbells and that was really it. They had like a few dumbbells and not really any room to actually do anything with the dumbbells. Uh, but they did have a lot of machines. And so they, they had the treadmill. They had two treadmills. I was like, I don't like treadmills. Um, and they had this the, uh, oh, the spinning, like a weird, like a sit down spinning machine. And I looked at the sit down spinning machine. It was like, you know, that seems like the worst of all worlds. Because it, it looks like you actually exercise a lot. But at the same time, you're completely sitting down, so it makes you feel like you're lazy. So <laughs> I just feel like, nah. Uh, but then they had this uh, this elliptical machine. So the elliptical machine, I don't know, go take a look at the elliptical machine. It's kind of exp hard to explain. I was like, yeah, let me, let me try out this elliptical machine. And so I really liked the elliptical machine, actually. So um, I was on the elliptical machine and ended up doing like two 30-minute sessions a day. So I'd wake up at like 5 in the morning. And do the elliptical, uh, and then with how my schedule worked out, I'd go in, I'd do some stuff, um, and then I'd have a couple hours off, and so in those couple hours off, I would then go do another 30 minutes of elliptical, and so I have to say, I really, really, really like the elliptical, and I like the elliptical enough that I came back, and this morning, I did an hour of ellipticaling, 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 anyways, um, so that was good, so I was very happy to come back, and even with the crap food and the salt, Again, it may just be bloating, too, with all that salt. That salt was horrible. Holy crap, right? And again, that, here's what I try to tell, like, like I say, some of these religious folks, is if, if you just take it down a notch a little bit sometimes, and you're a little bit just more honest about everything, I think people listen to you a little more. And so you guys hear me talk about all this other stuff, and so you know, like, when I talk about, like, how much, like, the salt was horrible. Holy crap, how much salt did they put in that shit, right? Literally, I was like two days in this trip, like I gotta go home. I had like a salad, and they put whatever dressing when it was on the salad. I was like, how much salt do you guys put in this crap, right? Um, so I have some weight gain or whatever, some, some, some water retention, I'm sure, from, the, from all that salt. Um, but I was happy to come back, and I weighed myself yesterday. And so I was at 199.5 when I left. And so I came back and I was in that 201, 201 frame, right? So that's not too bad. Like a week of not eating the best, treating yourself the best. I was at only 201. And then this morning, kind of cleansed out my system, cleansed out my system a little bit after yesterday. I was down to the 200 mark. So really, give or take, you know, after a week of being on the road, I'm essentially at the same place. So that's a win. That's a win, right? Sometimes, sometimes the wins and things like dieting and exercise, losing weight or whatever, uh, sometimes wins is simply plateauing. Sometimes plateauing is the way to go. Um, so anyways, so, so yeah, got about that 200 thing. Um, again, like I said, the elliptical-ing, the elliptical uh, this morning. I think I'm going to do more elliptical -ing. So, uh, so we talked about that before with like toning muscle. You don't really tone muscle apparently. It's like, huh. That makes sense. You don't tone muscle, you get rid of fat to show the muscle underneath. Uh, and so right now, since I'm trying to strip down a little fat off the body, uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to like that six, seven days a week of, um, of cardio. So uh, so I like the spinning classes. Again, if you haven't done spinning, do some spinning. Spinning would be some, some good stuff. Uh, so we're going to keep doing the spinning. So spinning is Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings for at least an hour. Uh, and then I figured before what I was doing is strength training. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'll do the elliptical machines. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do the elliptical machines, maybe Sunday, depending on how it goes. Um, and then for strength training, if I feel like I want to do it, uh, I'll go back and I will do it um, at, in the afternoon. Again, right? Hey, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. So you can either look at it as like a, as like a diet and exercise and be horrible, uh, and then you never want to do it, or you can look at it as a hobby. And so the way I'm kind of looking at all this is kind of like a hobby that I'm curious in doing. Um, so if it's a hobby, then you're, then you're happy to go back and do it in the afternoon, right? 
Yay! I get to go exercise this afternoon. Uh, but uh, but I think I will try that out. Because again, like I say, for me, it's the strength training isn't the big... I don't want to be like... Rawr. I just need to shave off some weight. It's more like... You know, it's like having a 50-pound pack. I need to shave off the 30 pounds off my body so I can carry a 50-pound pack. And it doesn't feel so bad, right? Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think we'll do the elliptical thing. But like I say, the other, the other thing too is like I say with the elliptical, and we'll talk about that in another video. Um, I really like it because it's so, so low impact. Again, I really do have to say, like I say, with my lifestyle, um, like so much of the exercise, like everything I've ever done in my life was high impact. Because um, again, as I say, and it's, it sounds egotistical or whatever, but it's just true, is so much of what I've done in life, um, it's not simply about being able to hit the guy, it's also about being able to take the hit. So there's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of exercise that's very abusive, especially for male bodies, um, because not only are you being trained to hit, but you're also getting trained to take hits. Um, and the issue is the best way to learn how to take hits is to fucking get hit, right? You know, when you have a buddy who just blasts your ass, just blah, right? You know, if you're willing to go and you're willing to get pummeled by a friend then it's amazing. You go into the real world and like a lot of these badass is like, oh, fuck. Dude, my friend is meaner than you. Let me show you what, right? Uh, but the problem is, like I say, with all that is with the martial arts and with running and with a lot of the exercise, it's just so hard on the body. And like I say, for me being almost 40 now, you know, if I'm here for another 40 years, um, I'd like my joints, <laughs> right? There's a lot of things I, I can't do a lot about, right? Whether I get Alzheimer's, who knows about that? Uh, cancer, now I know the vegans will lose their minds, but who knows, uh, but right? There's a lot of things I don't know if what, what I can do about my health, but the things like joints and all that, joints, I know, um, I know I can, I can try to be good on my body on. So that's one of the, the issues is so I lose weight, so that'll be better on my joints. Uh, and then with these exercises that are so low impact, um, I think it's good. Like I said, it really does feel good. So look, look, I'm a manly man. Am I not a manly man? Manly men elliptical too. Right. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I guess that is my my talk for the day. We're not outside right now because one, I wanted to show you all those bananas and two, it's cold again. Uh, my wife and I, we went down to Washington, D.C. yesterday to see the uh, the cherry blossoms. Very nice. Stupid amount of people, but it was very nice. But yesterday, it was, it was so beautiful. It was like bright. It was like sunny. It was in the 60s. Like It was one of those where you needed the coat on, but you still kind of felt warm. Get a little sunburn. Uh, but then like today now, I'm just sitting here like, oh, it's like 11 o'clock or something. And you're just like, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that sucks. That weather sucks. Uh, so anyways, that's why we're here. Because I really don't want to go out into the nasty cold. Just don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. So, okay. guess that's about all I got to say today. That is all I have to say today. But if you want, if you're interested in doing a banana cleanse, like I say, I will be doing it. And then you will hear from the geek's mouth how it works. Again, I don't know all the rules. I did not read the instruction manual. Because I'm a geek. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fucked up when you think about it? It is kind of like ironic. Like the people that build the infrastructure <laughs> usually don't read the instruction. <laughs> usually figure out what they're doing. Trial and error. <laughs> eh. But anyways, there we go. And if you're interested in doing your own little banana cleanse, again, as I say, you can buy them. Literally buy the case. These are 40 pound cases. Approximately 90, 90 bananas per case. Um, even at Whole Foods, like I say, one case of non-organic at Whole Foods was 25 U.S. dollars. Uh, an or uh, organic was about 29 U.S. dollars. And again, as I say, what's really good, like when you go into a, a real business, a real business, you say, this is what I need, and they go, how many do you need? They, they, don't, they don't quibble with you. Um, like I say, so don't feel, don't feel like a complete idiot when you do this, because like I say, Take it from me, you can walk into a grocery store and ask literally for four of these things and they will just hand them over. And with that, we'll call it a day.